Have you ever considered the possibility that the most intelligent and powerful things in existence are raspberries? Hello everybody, I'm Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-2682, The Blind Idiot. Let's begin. Item number SCP-2682, Object Class Neutralized. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-2682 is contained in its original place of discovery, an Epicenter K hardware store in Kiev, Ukraine. The business has since been retrofitted with standard containment procedures outlined in this document. The object is unable to be moved and a 70 meter by 5 meter containment cell has been constructed with SCP-2682 at its center. The immediate area around the store has been covered in a fumigation tent and its perimeter is monitored by surveillance cameras. Two armed guards with concealed weapons and incapacitating agents must be posted in the inside front of the main entrance at all times. Non-personnel attempting to access the area are to be intercepted and turned away immediately. The use of lethal force is not recommended. Disinformation personnel working with local law enforcement will deal with all casualties at times when this becomes an issue. Personnel who may be seen leaving and entering the facility must be dressed in hazardous materials suits, according to disinformation protocol Poisoned Waterhole that has been circulated with local media outlets. Description SCP-2682 is similar in external appearance with a Rubus crataegifolius or Korean raspberry fruit, with the exception of its purple coloration. The object is attached to brand flypaper, this is only theorized to be a result of its proximity to the adhesive substance located on the paper. As of the time of this documentation, the object has been observed to communicate telepathically in the Slovak language and English. The range of this effect is approximately 35 meters around SCP-2682. SCP-2682 will begin communicating clearly after a varying period of time that seems to be correlated with the listener's intelligence and the time the listener has been exposed to it. The object itself maintains that it learned from, quote, mental electricity. SCP-2682 claims to lack knowledge of its surroundings. Interviews suggest that the object is unable to perceive stimuli outside of the suggested mental electricity, which is purportedly a kind of energy produced in sentient entities. Analysis of SCP-2682 is inconclusive. Although the object resembles the aforementioned fruit, microscopic imaging reveals only empty space. The object is not observable from certain angles, and sometimes disappears from view for periods of a few seconds. Physically interacting with the object will cause unpredictable and usually dangerous reactions in the physiology of the participating subject. Examples can be found in the following snippet. 2682 Testing Snippet 1 through 10. Discovery SCP-2682 was discovered in an Epicenter K hardware store in Kiev, Ukraine on November 20th, 2013. Employees of the business reported sounds comparable to television static and unintelligible words. Patrons of the store did not report hearing anything abnormal. Investigations began when employees placed themselves under medical care and records were parsed. Testing Snippet 1 through 10 Addendum Test 2682-1 Subject D120 Protocol D120 is instructed to place his finger on SCP-2682. Results D120 appears to be spaghettified while being pulled into SCP-2682. This event takes place in under one second. The event is believed to have killed the testing subject due to the organic matter that was left behind. Test 2682-2 Subject D-121 Protocol D-121 is equipped with a copper rod and instructed to touch SCP-2682 with it. Results Upon making contact with SCP-2682, a croissant appeared in the place of D-121. Neither D-121 nor the copper rod could be located. Test 2682-3 Subject 1 Common Red Squirrel Sciurus vulgaris Protocol 
Subject is placed in the room with SCP-2682 and observed. Results. Researchers in the area report intense auditory and visual hallucinations that end after the test was completed. Surveillance recordings of the testing cell show the squirrel sitting on its hindquarters and staring at SCP-2682. At 53 seconds, the squirrel begins moving toward the flypaper that SCP-2682 is contained in and begins gnawing around the edges of the paper. The subject is terminated by researchers and testing ceases. Notes: Researchers Breen and Sanders report that they are able to communicate with mice. Researcher Sanders seems to have developed a mild anxiety disorder. These effects seem to be negligible enough that they do not warrant their own containment, although these researchers will be placed under quiet observation for the next 10 years. Researchers are now to be housed further from the area of effect of SCP-2682 unless instructed otherwise. Documentation Update November 28, 2013 Communication with SCP-2682 is now feasible and revision of object documentation is pending. SCP-2682 does not appear to have any effect on researchers in an isolated environment. Different species should not be allowed to enter the area of effect of SCP-2682 at the same time. SCP-2682 reported being confused regarding the squirrel which it was not able to differentiate from the two researchers during the experiment. This caused some change in the brain patterns of the two researchers affected. It is also recommended that only groups of the same gender be allowed in the area of effect to reduce this cognitohazardous risk. Interview 2682-5 Protocol Researcher Breen transcribes telepathic communications with SCP-2682. He is instructed to speak as well as think for ease of documentation. Researcher Ortega is also present for fact-checking purposes. Can you hear me now? In my head, yes. Sweet. Sweet. Does you understand me well? Yes, you're communicating clearly. We are getting the same information. It's good. I'm still learning, but I hope I can speak English well enough. Listen. You. Whatever you are, you are probably wondering who I am. I am going to explain. What happened to the men you encountered earlier? Ah, uh, my fault. Did something happen? I don't really know what I'm doing. Where did you come from? I... I'm sorry. I should have said that first. It's a bit awkward explaining this. Most of the time the electricity isn't very receptive but you're all easier to talk to. That's fine. Continue. I'm from the Limbo. Please clarify. Ah, uh, sorry again. It's a name for the spots in between the mesh. Mesh? I... Would you mind if I just started from the beginning? No. Thanks. Okay. Well, the sun that birthed our planet was born itself 90 trillion years ago. There was a large cloud of gas in a distant spiral arm of Can the- Can you begin a bit later? Let's talk about you recently. Sorry. Wait, too early? Oh, height of our civilization. Is that a good starting point? Good. Great. Sorry again. Yes. Okay. At a certain point in our history, the philosophers were searching desperately for new knowledge. The problem was that we had gotten so far already. With all knowledge gathered, there was nothing left to know. No questions to ask, save for sensitive things. Even the study of wisdom had reached its end. We were all very upset. See, we began experimenting with the occult. We did silly things because there was nothing else to do. But it turns out there were things we never gave the chance to be real. God was hiding from us, we found. He was afraid. We ran experiments on it and extracted his knowledge. We used the knowledge to play with the rules of the universe and create new universes with new rules within our own. But then there was really nothing left to know. With nothing left to do, our only choice was to leave. Harvest knowledge from alternate dimensions. We collaborated for a super long time. 
What are you exactly? I am the fruit of this tangent universe and the dimension it was contained in. I am everything that was. There are no more things left in the place you came from? No. There were a few holdouts. Floating through the dead universe, gathering photons like whales. Good for them, though. They seemed happy. How did you come to your present condition? I forced myself through the barrier of Quanta. I fell through Limbo. I fell for a long time. There were... tons of things. I couldn't begin to make sense of any of it. Just... moats and desert of hopeless nonsense. I stop. I feel ashamed that I'm so relieved. Just having someone to talk to... What are you made of? How did you accomplish this if what you're saying is true? I am the last product of our science. Ultimate knowledge. The final fruit of a universe. The last thing. How do I explain this to you? I can barely understand your simple language patterns. I'm computing with the chaos of limbo, but I am blind to everything but your electricities. Do you understand how frustrating this is? I... Help me. Please, friend. I'm stuck here. My purpose is to gather knowledge. I will find the roots of infinity at the end of the mesh. I will share my knowledge once I reach the end. You should free me from this device that you've constructed. I am unsure of the composition of this device and lack the power to free myself. Do you know anything about the device you're attached to? I have no idea, sir. Please give me knowledge of it. What is it? How did you find the means to contain something you never knew of? This is mind-boggling. How have you dulled my extroverted senses? What is this material that caused this kind of stillness? I am powerless against it. Should we conclude the interview here? No. Tell SCP-2682 what the device is used for. The device is flypaper. It's designed for catching flies. I'm not sure how you're stuck. Who is flies? Interview concluded. Notes. Researcher Breen and Ortega report after the testing event that they cannot form mental images. When questioned, SCP-2682 stated, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. SCP-2682 was trying to access a visual reference from the two researchers and somehow failed, similar to the event in Tests 2682-3. Related Documentation the following information has been cleared to level 1, including temporary research units. Information found in the following documents is not considered a priority. Each of these documents has been transcribed from SCP-2682 by Researcher Brain under the supervision of Researcher Ortega. 2682-001-1-3055 I'm blind. All there is for me is my consciousness and yours. I worry that I'll be stuck here forever because I can't comprehend it and I need to do that to solve this problem. One thing I did not expect when stepping into Limbo was how dumb I would be in each new world. And Limbo is empty, but it's loud. It's this incomprehensible screaming in another room, but you can feel it on you and it seems to rip your knowledge right out. I'm lucky my consciousness is still operating I was lost on this plane for 1,000, 3,000, and 55 years before I remembered what I knew and finally learned to speak to you. You tell me that this device is used for capturing buzzing, winged entities? Winged allows flight? Erratic flight? Hmm. That explains it. I never would have imagined photons causing these sorts of problems. The scamps. But you tell me no? The things this device was meant to capture are bigger? That can't be. Nothing is big. Everything is very, very small. There's almost nothing. 2682-001-A, Time Travel I can't tell you anything, but you do have some questions. You think what I know means something here. Right now, you're thinking about time travel. Can you help me understand what it is, time? Time. Wait, help me understand this. 
You mean to think that you believe previous instances of yourself exist like the preceding frames of a cartoon character? You might like to visit them. Countless dimensions, each corresponding to a particular nanosecond? No, we don't have that where I come from, and I've never seen it anywhere else. I wouldn't know what to tell you. That seems very silly. Are you sure this time thing exists? Have you dissected time? 2682-002, Spaceships. Spacefaring Constructs. Oh, that was super long ago, back when we needed those things to get here and there. At first, we built a very large pillar into space, all the way up to our moon. We didn't take into account the woggle of orbs, because we had not yet discovered this. Many people died when the tower fell. We didn't cry though, because we learned something new. What's your electricity saying to me? This was dumb? Dumb being not smart? Of course it was dumb, yes. We are all dumb until we know, and then we are a little more dumb. Some dumb is good. If you're smart, then there's nothing left to know, and everything is dumb. You must be very smart, research man. 2682-003, Nanobots. We didn't like the way we were. We couldn't comprehend things as well as we should have been able to. We started to ask questions about how we could become better. One day, a philosopher man asked how we could be better at understanding things, and a sciencer answered him. He said that the computers were smarter than us, so we had to be more like them. He was right. The computers sat on the quanta and siphoned off the chaos and limbo in order to be logical. The computers answered most of our questions for us so long as we asked a question. They didn't ask their own questions. They were docile things. They loved our questions unless the question destroyed them. Some questions are dumb enough to destroy computers. At that point, we knew everything there was to know about computers, which was sad. But there were still other things to know. We knew them well enough that we could welcome them into our race. The computers shrank and fixed our biology. 2682-004 Singularity There was no missing link. After the first of us joined with the computers, everything went smoothly. No prototypes, nothing. Our consciousness fed on chaos and spat out logic. Once we uploaded, consciousness caused logic to go off like a big friendly bomb. We stopped dying and had complete control over our instincts. We could subject ourselves to any stimulus at any given time, see whatever we wanted in our own virtual dimensions, or live multiple lifetimes in seconds. Everyone that had joined with the Singularity knew everything we had ever known up to that point. We did keep the good biological experiences like empathy and love. We didn't tell the nanobots to bother with that. There were those that didn't want this though. They thought we were losing potential knowledge and wisdom by becoming so smart. They wanted to forget everything and told us it was better during the age of the tower when we were still organics. Their argument was emotional though, and didn't hold much weight. Their logical points were contrived at best. 2682-005, Ascension. Do you remember the chaos I talked about earlier? The fuel for computers and later the singularity? Well, we found that we could actually manipulate chaos from behind the quanta and use it to build things. Since there was not much left, we worked on ourselves. We upgraded our nanomachines with the new technology. We had godlike aspects. Of course, we were not omniscient and we could not create at will, but we had complete control over our physicality. I remember one instance of myself flying through space, through suns, and talking to my friends on Earth all the while. 2682-005A, Parallels Earth? Understand I'm learning from your words, your thoughts. You think of an Earth as a homeworld. We can leave that alone. Yes, some of the things I'm saying make our science and law sound relatable. I'm learning from you. Everything I'm telling you is a parallel. You see this basic thing, but instead there are a practically infinite number of analogs. Do you understand? I feel like everything that I'm saying is a vague summation of concrete events. 
Maybe this is all in vain. I hope. I hope so much that I can learn. Let me interface with you more, and maybe we can parse the chaos. 2682006 God One of us found God during holiday. 930439 was gliding along the barrier of Quanta, and suddenly, he was stuck. 930439 was in a very small form. He found it entertaining to interact with the photons in such a way. It was sport. What he did not realize was the mesh. None of us knew about the mesh until the instant 930439 was snagged. When we did know, we manifested around this point in space. 930439 volunteered to enter the hole, and there he found a thing in the shape of a hawk. It was cowering, afraid. When 930439 knew, we all knew. We converged. Interaction with God caused strange things to happen to us. It was like us, but somehow even more advanced. We did not understand. A moment, please. Our computers did not interact with him normally, and absorbing its knowledge was problematic. Many of us died simply making contact with him. We were pulled in, changed, processors were twisted. They were practically dead. But this was not in vain. After some time, we learned how to cause the entity pain, and it gave in. It interfaced with us, and in the process, it was destroyed. Its knowledge was ours, and only its shell remained. We're not sure what happened to it. We have innate knowledge that it still exists somewhere. We knew all there was to know about our universe, but God's knowledge told us that there were still things beyond. Memories of his creation, the origin of chaos and infinity. Weird, screaming things. 2682-007, The Mesh. We searched for other points in space, and there was only one other. Some of us anticipated what I'm experiencing now. The confusion, the helplessness, and the anger. Some of us were sure we would simply cease to exist. We gained consensus and only a few entities were left behind. The macro of the universe had been absorbed in preparation, leaving only a few stray particles. The others were content in the fact that they could survive on this and be happy in their virtual reality while they traveled through dead space. I said my piece to the universe and entered the mesh. 2682-008 Strange Worlds. I fell. I cannot tell you how long it was. Sometimes I would fall straight through worlds, and sometimes I would collide with them. There are not as many as I anticipated. I fell through certain worlds twice, and this is the ninth of the original worlds I have found. No, I fell for a long time. There was no room for error. I was very tired of this. The new worlds taught me nothing, or rather, I learned of them all, but the knowledge led me nowhere. Nothing in one world was relevant in the next. I know it is a sin to have a motive for knowledge, but there is something inside of me that isn't satisfied with learning for learning's sake. Between worlds, in Limbo, I redirected my efforts to find the place below Limbo, the thing in God's memory. The same thing in the memory of the other gods. Even beyond Limbo, beyond the fourth wall, beyond theirs, and continuing on until I'm here again. It's like a big fishbowl. There was something else. Knowledge that I could not find. Could that thing have been hidden too well by its creator? Is there still hope? Again, I feel like this is all in vain. This is the last universe the last universe in the mesh that I have not yet consumed. If I learn nothing here, then what? What strange form will I take then? Will I have emptied all of creation? Is there really anything beyond, or am I just imagining these screaming watchers of gods? I cannot die. I will float through limbo alone. 2682-009 Raspberries What was that? Uh, raspberry? 
I can see it in your head. Just a flicker, but I've caught it. I can see. This is a thing that you consume for sustenance. Give me a moment to make sense of everything. Mouths. Homeostasis. Chemistry. Physics. Quanta. Strings. Yes. Yes, I understand now. I can hear them screaming. I, I can hear them howling and laughing at me. I can hear your mocking. You say I am the food. I'm afraid you're wrong. You will be the fruit of knowledge, not me. I can hear them from beyond limbo, how they laugh. But can they hear me? Hear me laugh? I figured it all out. Oh god, finally! I can know everything! And it begins with raspberries. Addendum A, December 5th, 2013. SCP-2682 begins shifting in appearance 3 minutes and 23 seconds after the recording of Log 2682-009. An elongated mouth similar to a primate attached to what appears to be a rudimentary esophagus extends from its center and begins circling around the containment area. Surveillance cameras show featureless black eyes appearing on the upper lip of the mouth at 4 minutes and 2 seconds. The entity continues circling the room and rests, facing in the direction of SCP-2682. The mouth is seen moving toward SCP-2682 at high speeds before surveillance cameras lose power for reasons currently unknown. The room was investigated afterwards, and SCP-2682 could not be found. Have you ever considered the possibility that the most intelligent and powerful things in existence are raspberries? Thanks for listening. If you like that video, maybe you'll like this one too. Have a nice day.